it's Thursday and today we are going to be making this owlbear plush that you may or may not recognize as one of the collectible items from Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Okay, let's talk about tools and materials. So for today's project, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in at least two colors. So for today, I have picked this dusty brown color for my main color and cream for my accent color. You'll also need a scrap amount of one to three colors to add a few details. And I've picked a couple of flesh tones here for mine today. In addition to this, you will need your 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. All right, so for our boy, you might notice that I've used buttons for his eyes and beads for his beak and claws. So if you want to get the same look as mine, you are going to be needing those today as well. Now, I'm, this isn't me recommending a specific brand. These are just literally the ones I could find at my craft store that sort of fit well enough. So first off for his claws, I am using eight millimeter round wooden beads that came in a pack of 50. So you might be seeing a lot of these in future and different projects. For his beak, I found these 20 millimeter wooden oval walnut beads that are actually kind of really nice. I just liked the texture on those. Would have been nice to have them a little bit bigger for him, but I think that these worked fine. And lastly, for the eyes, these are technically the buttons that, that I've picked. They're a fashion button hemline brand they came in a pack of six and they had this like engraved white flower pattern on them that I didn't really like so I just sort of sanded that off and gave us a little bit more of a rustic button look but like just use what you can find at your local store but yeah buttons and beads so a link to today's pattern will be made available to my patrons and will also be listed in my Etsy and I will leave links to both in the description down below for anybody who is interested so he's just big enough that it's a little hard to fit him in shot. Okay, that works. Okay, so to start with today, we actually need to make his little ears first because we then attach them as we build up the body. So in order to make those, I'm going to be grabbing my main color and I'm going to start with a magic ring of six. I'm a little out of practice of filming these videos. I don't think I've filmed a pattern video in a while now. Still, there's a few of them coming up I think in October. So this is good to get me back on the horse. So from here, we're going to be placing a two stitch increase on one side of the ear and then a three stitch increase on the other side of the ear to build up two slightly different slopes. So we're going to start with two single crochet. Then an increase. two single crochet and then three single crochet all into the same stitch. Then in row three, we're going to work two single crochet, an increase, and I am working invisible increases for those. Then four single crochet, Three single crochet all in the same stitch. And then a single crochet to finish off your row. So that brings us to 12 stitches around. And at this point, if you flatten it out, you'll be able to see those two slopes I was talking about. So we have quite a sharp slope on the side that has the two stitch increase. We have a bit more of a gradual slope on the side with the three stitch increase. So now we're going to work row four, five, six, and seven to continue building up those slopes. And then finish off. So there is our ear and you're going to need to make another one of those as well. So when you've got two of those, pop them to one side and we'll grab them when we need them. Next up, we're going to be making the main base piece of our owlbear. And to do so, we start at his base. So once again, I'm going to be working this entire piece in my main color. And we're going to start with a magic ring of six. Thank you. 
So we're then going to work seven rows just to increase the size of our starting circle. So for anybody unfamiliar with brackets in patterns, all it means is that you repeat the instructions inside the brackets the number of times on the outside of the brackets. So for each of these rows, you're repeating what's in the brackets six times. So here we are at the end of row eight. So your circle slash hexagon should be 48 stitches around. I would strongly encourage you to count and just make sure before we go any further. So row nine starts with four repeats of seven single crochet and then an increase. So there is our first one and I'm going to repeat that three more times. So that should bring you approximately two thirds of the way around your circle. We're then going to work seven single crochet. And then three single crochet all into the same stitch. We're then going to finish off our row by working seven single crochet and then an increase. So there's the end of row nine and it should have 54 stitches. Now where we did that three stitch increase is going to be where a very subtle slight tail will be on our owlbear. So row 10, this time we're going to work four repeats of eight single crochet and then an increase. We're then going to work eight single crochet which will bring us back to where we worked three single crochet into the same stitch in the last row. And we are once again going to work three single crochet into the same stitch. So that should fall into the middle stitch of the three stitch increase from the previous row. We're then going to finish up our row by working nine single crochet and then an increase. Now that should be 62 stitches around and that is as wide as your owlbear is going to get. <laughs> Now it might look small to you at this point, but I promise after we've attached the legs to the side, it bulks him out pretty significantly. So part of the charm of this particular owlbear is these visible seams that you can find in various places. Now this pattern fakes a lot of those seams, which brings us to what we're about to do in row 11 and row 12. So for the next two rows, we're going to be building in some infrastructure to help us fake the base seam on this owlbear. And I just wanted to let you know that if you would prefer not to do that, you can absolutely just work these rows as regular single crochet through both loops. Okay, so just as a reminder, when you look straight down at your stitches, you'll see that there are two loops to each stitch. There'll be a loop on the side closest to you and a loop on the side furthest away from you. So this is the front loop and that is the back loop. And for the next two rows, we're going to be working in the back loops only, leaving the front loops free. So row 11 is 62 single crochet around, working only in the back loops, leaving those front loops free. So then in row 12, we're going to be working in the back loops again, but this time we're working 49 single crochet, then a decrease. And then 11 single crochet to get us back to the start. Like so. So you'll see that we have this double row of front loop stitches that we'll be using to add that detail later. So if you are going to have trouble finding the start point of those front loop rows, I suggest you mark them now. I personally think that they stand out quite a bit compared to the regular stitching. So it's just a matter of like mark them if you need to and now's the time to do it. So with that base established, the next thing to do for our owlbear is to build up sort of the main trunk of his body. 
So in order to do that, we are now going to be working rows 13 all the way through to row 36. So I would consider these all to be relatively simple rows. There's a small handful of rows that include decreases and the rest of them are simply just rows of single crochet around. So next up we're going to start building up the head. So in row 37 we are going to start increasing slightly, there's the front of this thing, so the little, little point at the back is the tail, you can sort of see it clearest from below, that's the tail so that's at the back. And in the next row we're going to start placing a couple of increases along the front and sides just to help sort of swell the face out a little bit more for a little bit of definition. So for row 37 we are going to start with 21 single crochet around. And then an increase, eight single crochet across the front, another increase, and then 17 single crochet back to the start of our row. So that's the end of row 37, we should have 50 stitches in our row. And we're going to do basically the same thing again in row 38. So that brings us to row 39. So row 39 does have a couple of sets of brackets. So I just thought I'd talk you through this particular row just to help you understand what we're doing. So it starts with 14 single crochet, like so, which brings us to the first set of brackets. And so we want to do three sets of a single crochet and then an increase. So there's our single crochet and our first increase. That's our first repeat. So we're going to do that two more times. With that done, we are going to work 20 single crochet across the face. Which brings us to the second set of brackets where we are going to work three repeats of an increase and then a single crochet. So there is our increase and our single crochet. That's our first repeat. We're going to do that two more times. Then it's just six single crochet back to the start of our row. So it's not super obvious at this point, but the lip of, at the top of your body should now be kind of curved outwards. So now we just need to build up the height of the head. And we do that by working eight rows of 58 single crochet around. So there we are at the end of row 47. Row 48 is 29 single crochet, then a decrease, 12 single crochet across the face, another decrease, and then 13 single crochet back to our starting point. And row 49 is almost exactly the same thing again to get us down to 54 stitches. And then in row 50, we are going to do one row of 54 single crochet. And this is the last row before we start attaching the ears. We are nearly done with this piece. Like so. So note that I haven't stuffed this at all yet. That's just a personal preference kind of thing. You can stuff yours if you would prefer. So we are now going to attach our ear pieces. So I have both of mine here. And both ear pieces are exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter which one you grab first. So to start with, we need to work around until we reach where we want the first ear to be attached. So in order to do that, we work 14 single crochet. Like so. We're then gonna grab our first ear. And what I want you to do is find your finishing off point and count 
five stitches after it. So one, two, three, four, and five. So this stitch here, the fifth stitch, the fifth stitch. <laughs> and I'm going to line that stitch up with the next stitch of our head. Like so. So my hook is currently through one layer of the ear and one layer of the head. And I'm going to work a single crochet. So that is our first one. And I'm going to do that for the next 11 stitches as well. So we're going to match up one stitch of the ear, one stitch of the head, and then work our single crochet. So that's two, three, four, and five. Brings us to the stitch before the finishing off point. So it's a little bit harder to, you might have to like fiddle around a little bit to get that piece out of the way. We go six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve <laughs> so that's what that should currently look like So we're going to carry on by working around the head to where we want the second ear to be attached. So that is 18 single crochet. There we are. Then we're going to grab our second ear. So for the second ear, we once again need to find our finishing off point, which is a really obvious point. And this time we are counting 17 stitches after it. 17. So it's this one over here. You could also have counted the eighth stitch before your finishing off point if that's easier for you. So once again, we're going to line that stitch up with the next stitch of the head and work a single crochet. And we're going to do that for the next nine stitches as well. So 10 single crochet through one layer of the ear and one layer of the head. So that's 10. So you might be wondering at this point why we've attached the first ear with 12 stitches and this ear with only 10. Uh, and that is because if you look at row 52, <laughs> You'll note that it starts with the final two stitches to attach this ear. Uh, it's just that the ear happens to fall over the end of our round and this was the easiest way to write that. So we're going to work those last two stitches now as the first two stitches of row 52. Like so. So those ears are on there. <laughs> so row 52 will just finish locking those ears in place on the head. So we're going to continue it with 11 single crochet across the back of the head. And that should bring us to one stitch of the body before the first stitch that's joined this ear on. And we're going to work a single crochet three together. So this stitch will use three stitches of our piece. The first one is this final stitch of the body. And the next two are the first two available stitches around the outside edge of this ear. So there is the one body stitch. And then being careful not to get confused where our ear is joining on, we have these two available stitches of the ear. So there is my single crochet three together. I'm then going to work eight single crochet around the outside of that ear. Which brings us to the other side. We should have two stitches of our ear free before we reach the body stitches again. And we're once again going to work a single crochet three together through two stitches of the ear and then the next available stitch of the body. So that is ear one properly anchored and now we need to work across the face, which will be 16 single crochet. Bringing us across to just before ear two, and we're going to single crochet three together. One stitch of the body and the first two available stitches of the ear. We're then going to just finish this round by working eight single crochet around the outside of this ear. And eight. Now at the end of this row, I strongly, strongly suggest that you stop and you count how many stitches there are in your row, just because in these little corner points where we've done our single crochet three togethers, it is so, so easy to accidentally gain a stitch in our round and it will throw off the top of the head if you don't have the right count. 
Alright, so I have 48 stitches. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. So that brings us to row 53, and we are still stranded partway through year number two here. And we're going to finish that off now. So it starts with a single crochet three together, using two stitches of the ear and the first available stitch of the head. So with that out of the way, we are now going to work nine single crochet across the back of the head. Seven, eight, and nine. We are then going to work a single crochet three together. And then <laughs> six stitches across the top of the ear. Then another single crochet three together. 14 single crochet across the face. Single crochet three together when we reach the other ear. And then working across the top of the second ear, we are going to work five single crochet. And a decrease to finish our round. Bringing us down to 39 stitches. Now we do still have quite a wide opening at the top of our owlbear, but I am going to stop and stuff at this point. And that is mostly because in our original fellow here, I've actually put a weight in him. <laughs> um, and you should stop and stuff this guy while this hole is still big enough to fit any weight that you would like to use. I personally think this project is a great candidate for any sort of glass beads or any kind of weights that you have that way. This guy here, because he is just for me, I can be a little bit stupider about it. And so his weight is um, a vitamin container filled with rice, but that's because I'm going to know not to put him in a washing machine. So I don't recommend that if you are selling or gifting your Albert. That is just a, a personal use kind of thing. And even then I'm, if it goes terribly wrong, I'm not taking responsibility for it. So we are going to stuff our Albert sleeve now. And when I tell you this is going to take a lot of stuffing, I'm, I'm not joking. You want to stuff this piece really, really firmly. Now I do recommend that you tear your stuffing up into a veritable snowstorm of cotton puffs before you get started because otherwise you might end up with lumpy stuffing and this is just one way to avoid it. If you know any other ways do feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm always looking for new pieces of advice to to share with all of you. Okay so my, my owlbear is under here somewhere. There we go. Ah. <laughs> and then it's just a matter of like you just start stuffing it on in there. I don't think I've ever had to stuff with my whole hand before on this channel, so please excuse that. Maybe for one of the dragons? So I'm just making sure that the stuffing gets into all of the little details, like a little pointy tail at the back. It's only slight, but it does exist. As well as up into the two points of the ears. Now, for anybody out there looking to save every possible imaginable scrap of yarn, you don't technically need to follow the rest of the instructions to close off the top of the head because we do make a hood that goes over the top. You can hopefully see there. But I do actually recommend that you follow the rest of the instructions and close this off properly just to seal everything in place. So with that done, we're going to work the final five rows of the head to finish closing off this opening. And then finish off. So there is our main body piece. I am just going to weave this end. I'm just going to tuck that end away so I don't have to look at it. And we're going to pop this to one side and we're going to make his face piece. All right, so the face piece is worked as a flat piece, meaning we chain one and turn at the end of each row. And I'm going to be making it out of my accent color, which is cream for this particular pattern. <laughs> so we're going to start by chaining 14. 
like so. We're then going to turn and starting in the second chain from our hook, we're going to work 13 single crochet back along the length of the chain. Like so, then chain one and turn. We're then going to work rows three, four, and five, which all consist of an increase at either end of the row and single crochets in between. So that's what it should currently look like. We're then going to work four rows of 19 single crochet, chaining one and turning at the end of each row. So there we are at the end of row nine, and we're now going to be narrowing back off to, to round off the other side of the face. So <laughs> row 10 starts with a decrease, then 15 single crochet across, And another decrease, chain one and turn. And row 11 and row 12 are basically the same with a decrease at either end of the row and single crochets in between. And pop. So row 13 is our final row and it starts by working across the stitches as per normal and then we're going to continue on and work around the whole edge of the face. So we are going to start with a decrease, then nine single crochet across, and then a decrease. So far so good, right? We are then going to rotate our work so we are looking at the curved edge here and I'm going to put 11 single crochet around this edge. The actual stitch count doesn't matter so as long as you're getting roughly 11 single crochet in there it'll be fine. <laughs> So that's 11, then rotating again. So now we are looking at the back of our foundation chain and we are going to work 13 single crochet across there. Then one final rotation, so we're looking at the ends of the rows again. And once again, I'm going to work 11 single crochet up this side. which should bring us back to the starting point of that row. And I'm just going to slip stitch into that first stitch and finish off. So there is our face piece. Pop that to one side. Next up, we're going to be making his hood. So his hood comes down over the top of his head, touches the tips of both ears, and curves slightly around the back as well. Hopefully you can get a, a pretty good feel for what's going on there. So for that, we are once again working, where, where is my yarn? There it is, I keep losing my yarn, it's camouflaged. So once again, I'll be working in my main color, which is this brown. So while the actual stitch counts might vary slightly from the face piece, it is constructed in essentially the exact same way. So we are going to stop and we're gonna make the hood now.
So there is our hood. You'll note that it's like this vague kind of um, cartoon gemstone type shape where these points here go tips of the ears, this tip goes down on the forehead and then that's the back of the head there. But for now we are going to pop that to one side as well. Okay, so next up we are going to make his front paws, which I'm not sure they're reading very well on camera because I've used very dark blue for this one here. But basically they start at the little paw and then work up to the point of the shoulder. So once again in our main colour, start with a magic ring of six. We're then going to work six increases. And then for row three, we're going to work two repeats of two single crochet, three single crochet into the same stitch, and then three single crochet. So there's our first repeat and we're going to do it again. So that should bring us up to 16 stitches around. And then we're going to work row four and row five to bring us up to 24 single crochet around. So now that we're up to 24 single crochet around, we are going to work 13 rows of 24 single crochet each to add the length to our arm. So there we are at the end of row 18. I'm just gonna remove my marking yarn. That's just marking the first stitch of every row, in case you were wondering what's going on there. I can't find a bobby pin to save my life. Anywho, um, so there is the main tube of our arm, and so now we just need to narrow off into the point of the shoulder. Now, we are going for a pointy shoulder because a lot of it ends up covered over by the little fluff bit anyway. So there was no point in just like building more of an arm than what you see here. <laughs> Sorry, that weight gives me so much joy. Um, we are going to work seven single crochet and then two decreases. And then 13 single crochet back to the start of our row. That's where we popped our decreases. It's going to slowly narrow off this arm just by closing off one side of it while keeping the other side running. So. Yeah, that's how you form a point. Row 20, we start with six single crochet. Two decreases. And then 12 single crochet back to the starting point. Then row 21 is five single crochet. Then two decreases. And 11 single crochet back to our starting point. So we're gonna do one more row and then stuff. So row 22 is four single crochet. Then two decreases. And 10 single crochet back to our starting point. So our opening should be down to 16 stitches around and we are going to stop and stuff. So notable with all of the limbs is, is we want fairly firm stuffing to about the halfway point and then loose stuffing only in the part that's going to attach to the body. So once again just dismantling my stuffing so we don't end up with lumps. I'm going to firmly stuff my arm up to kind of let's call it an elbow and then loosely stuff the rest of the arm as we go. So firm stuffing, loose stuffing. It's not going to be the end of the world if you do overstuff this piece. It'll just give him bulkier limbs, which could be nice and cuddly, you know? Right, so we have a few more rows left to finish off this shoulder point. So with row 23, we are going to work three single crochet. 
and then two decreases. Then nine single crochet back to our starting point. Then row 24 is two single crochet, two decreases, and eight single crochet back to our starting point. Then one single crochet, and two decreases. Then seven single crochet back to our starting point. And then we're going to work our final two rows to get us down to six stitches in our opening. And finish off. So I'm going to squidge just a little bit of this stuffing around just to allow the stuffing I put in this section to distribute itself a little more evenly. We want that fairly flat where it's going to sit against the body. So I am just going to take my remaining tail and just pull it through the remaining stitches in our opening. I personally use front loops only for this. I am not convinced it makes a difference. I just find it easier. And pull tight to close like a drawstring bag. Now we've had a chance to pause for a second. I want to pause for another moment and make another one. So yeah, you're gonna need, you're gonna need two front paws. So I'm gonna pop those to one side now with the body and the other bits. So for the back paws, we're actually going to start in our accent color. So I'm just getting my cream ready to go. And we're going to start with a magic ring of six. We're then going to work six increases. leaving us with 12 stitches in our round. Now from here we want to build up not a circle but an oval. So we're going to be loading our increases into two distinct patches, one at the top and one at the bottom. So in order to do that we are going to start by working three single crochet and then three increases. So one, two, three and then three single crochet and then three increases to get us back to the start of our row. So what these next few rows are going to show you is basically the difference between evenly spacing your increases and clustering your increases into different points to make different shapes. We're then going to work three single crochet and then three repeats of an increase and then a single crochet. So there's our first increase and a single crochet. That's our first repeat. And we're going to do it two more times. We're then going to work three single crochet and then three repeats again of an increase and then a single crochet to get us back to our starting position. So our Vaguely oval shape is coming along nicely. So I have one more row in my accent color before we're going to change to our main color. So this row we are going to work five single crochet. And then three repeats of an increase then a single crochet. That's one. Two. And three, six single crochet, then three repeats of an increase and a single crochet. That's one, and three. Now there is just one single crochet left in this round, and we are going to use that to change colors. Now, honestly, this this is the only place in the whole pattern that you need to know how to change colors. But I'm going to show you how I do it anyway. We have one single crochet left to work in our cream and I've got my brown here ready to go. So I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. So basically I'm halfway through a single crochet there and I'm just going to hold my cream out of the way, grab my brown and pinch it at the base of the stitch. I'm then going to yarn over with it and pull it through both loops of my cream and then tug 
on my old color there, my cream, to settle that stitch down into place. So what you'll see there is we have a single crochet in cream finished and settled in nicely, but our brown is on our hook ready to go. I'm going to take a moment here and trim off the cream and just knot these two together. I normally don't bother, but I'm feeling like doing things properly today. And so now we can carry on in our main color. So just like we did at the base of the body, we want to leave some loops free now so that we can add some stitch detailing on later. So once again, that means we are going to be working in our back loops only, but you can absolutely work the next two rows just as regular single crochet through both loops. But for everyone else, we are going to work two rows of back loop only single crochet around. They are 30 stitches each for a combined total of 60 stitches. There is our first row and you can see those front loops that I've left free there. And we're going to do one more row of back loop single crochet. So there we are at the end of row seven. Now, once again, if you think you're going to have trouble finding the starting points of our front loop rounds, mark them now just while they're still like really easy and obvious, but I'm not personally going to worry about it just because I'm relatively comfortable I'm going to be able to find them again pretty easily. So from here we are going to keep working in our brown to build up the rest of the leg. finish off and once again weave your remaining tail through the remaining stitches to close off any remaining opening and tuck that away now just in case that wasn't explicitly obvious this is quite firmly stuffed in the foot section and then quite loosely stuffed in the drumstick or thigh section just the same way we did with the front paws okay so once you have one of these you need to make another one as well Pop them to one side. Okay, so with the limbs made, now all we have left to do is make his fluffy bits. <laughs> we get one for each of his arms and one for his chest. So we're going to start by making the chest one. Thunk. Oh, sorry, we have his patches as well, but we're doing his chest, we're, but we're doing his fluffy bits first. So in your accent color, we are going to chain 21 and turn. like so. We're then going to turn and start in the second chain from our hook and work 20 single crochet back across that chain. There we are, we've reached the end of the row and then I'm going to chain one and turn. So we're actually going to repeat that row of 20 single crochet across and then chain one and turn three more times. Basically working 20 single crochet and then chaining one and turning at the end of the row. There we are at the end of row five. So from here I'm just worried that the next couple of steps might throw some people, so we're going to do them together. So for row six we're going to work 18 single crochet across. So there should be two stitches left at the end of the row, but we're not going to do anything with those. Instead, we're going to chain one and we're just going to turn and work back along the stitches we just did, leaving those stitches unworked. So row seven is 16 single crochet across. So once again, there is two stitches left at the end of the row that we're not working into and instead chain one and turn. So that gives us this little kind of step up in the middle. And we are now going to work two more rows of 16 single crochet, chaining one and turning at the end of each row. 
And there we are at the end of row nine. So now we have one more point to make in the center. And we're going to start that by working 13 single crochet across, which leaves three stitches at the end of your row unworked. Chain one and turn. Then for row 11, we are going to start with a decrease, then six single crochet, and then another decrease, which should leave three stitches at the end of your row that we're going to leave unworked. Chain one and turn. For row 12, we are going to decrease, four single crochet, and then decrease, chain one and turn. Row 13 is a decrease, two single crochet, and then a decrease, chain one and turn. And then finally, row 14 is simply two decreases across. And we're gonna finish off. Now, I know this doesn't look very much like anything at the moment. It's looking very kind of jagged and not necessarily like a lovely fluffy chest piece, but there's a trick to this. We are actually going to make two of them and now we're gonna join them together. Okay, so if you want an invisible join between these two pieces, you can absolutely use the color that you use to make them. That's what I did for my original owlbear. And you'll see there that we've joined them together and you can't see specifically which stitches have done it. But for today, I wanna to show you a different technique that makes it look like we have done a bunch of tiny little stitches around the outside. So for that, you are going to need a contrast color and I do recommend something darker than the color that you've used. So I'm just attaching that to my hook with a slip knot. So what you want to do is grab your two chest pieces and layer them on top of one another. Now, for me, these look pretty much the same on either side. If yours has a nice side and a not so nice side, put your nice sides so that they are facing each other. We're going to be turning this inside out at the end. I'm going to be starting at two starting points, which I can tell because of where these tails are. And I am going to start at that point so that I'll be working down this short face first. Now I'm gonna attach my yarn using a standing single crochet. So if you don't know how to do one of those, you can just slip stitch to join and then chain one and single crochet into the same gap. So there is our first stitch. And we're basically going to be single crocheting around the whole edge down to this corner here. So I'm going to work 18 single crochet down this first diagonal. Though I will say that the exact stitch count doesn't really matter. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So there we go. Which brings us to the tip of the chest piece where we have that final row 14 on both of them where we did two decreases. So that's those two stitches there. I'm going to work a single crochet through each of those. go and now we are going to work back up this other diagonal to this top corner and it should be again roughly 18 stitches like so I'm then going to finish off on this end and we are leaving this side open and that's because you could absolutely just go with it this way out but I'm gonna turn it in the other way, making sure to poke out each one of those, I don't know what to call them, point details, fluff details, like so, which gives us 
nice rounded edges and this very hand sewn aesthetic around the edge. So that's kind of a a choice that you can make if you are going for that seamed aesthetic. So that is his chest fluff. We are going to put a little bit of stuffing in here. You can stuff it as much as you like, honestly. I'm just going to put a little tiny bit in that main point to help it stand out. And we're going to pop that to one side and make his arm fluffs. So his arm fluffs are made pretty much the same way. I've made three of them here already. You'll note that they are a very strange little torpedo shape. So we need to make one more now. So we construct his arm fluffs the same way we made his chest fluff, which is by making two pieces for each of them layering them on top of one another and then stitching around one of the edges and turning them inside out to, to smooth everything out a little bit. So grabbing my cream again. This time we are going to chain 15. There we are, 15. Then we're gonna turn and start in the second chain from our hook and work 14 single crochet along our base chain. So, then chain one and turn, and we're going to work 11 single crochet back along those stitches. So that's 11, and then we're going to work a decrease. So there's our decrease, and we still have one stitch that we haven't worked into at the end, but we are going to chain one and turn instead. So row four starts with a decrease. and then 10 single crochet to the end of the row. Like so, chain one and turn. For row five, we are going to work eight single crochet. So that does leave three stitches that we haven't worked into. Chain one and turn. Then we're going to work four single crochet. leaving four stitches we're not working into. Chain one and turn, four more single crochet. And finish off. There we are. And as mentioned, I have made three more of those as well. So you need four in total. They're all exactly the same. And you're going to sort them into two pairs and just layer them up on top of one another so that their starting points and ending points are in the same places. Now, just like with the chest fluff, you can decide if you want visible stitches around the outer edge or if you want them to be invisible, in which case just use the same color as you've used to make the fluffy pieces. But I'm once again going to be using my contrast color. There we go. And there we are, turning it over so that I'm once again starting through like the starting point of both pieces. I'm going to work five stitches up this first edge. Though, again, exact stitch count doesn't really matter. So that's five. Then I'm going to turn and we're going to work four single crochet across the next edge. And we are working through both layers, just in case I haven't explicitly said that. <laughs> That's four. Then we're going to turn again and we're going to put one stitch in this short little edge here. Turn again and we're going to do four stitches across the top. Turning again, we are going to work two stitches down this short side and then one final turn we are going to work six stitches along this final edge finish off. 
once again we are going to turn these in the other way. So that's how we go from this shape to a nice rounded floppy looking cloud. So yeah, now I'm just going to do the other one real quick. So with two of those, we're going to pop them to one side and make the final pieces. We are nearly done. So you'll note on our boy, we have a little patch over his chest fluff. We have one on his back and we have another little one on one of his hind legs. So we have three patches in total to make. So the first one we'll cover is the chest slash leg patch because technically they're the same pattern. So I'm going to be swapping to working in. Nope, that's going to be a terrible idea on camera. Okay, we are going to be using, I'm going to be using this color to make one of my patches. We are going to start by chaining seven. Then we're going to turn and starting in the second chain from our hook, we're going to be working back into these chains. Now we are going to be working half double crochet. That is because they are slightly taller than a regular single crochet. For anybody who needs to know how to do those, all you do is yarn over your hook once, insert your hook through the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. You then just yarn over and pull through all three. So there is our first one and we're going to work five more of those across our chain. like so. We're then going to chain one and turn. And we have four more rows of six half double crochet to work to build up a little square. So we're just going to do that now. And finish off. So there is our first little patch and you're going to need two in that size. So I've done mine in a different color. This is obviously a perfect piece to make in whatever scraps you have lying around. And then we have one more to make that's a little bit bigger. Exact same construction though. Excuse me sir. So we're just going to whip up the back patch now. And there is the back patch as well. So now we have our patches. In fact, now we have all of our pieces. Okay, so now we're gonna start assembly. And this is kind of a multi-step process, but we'll just go through it one thing at a time. So the first thing you're going to need is your main body piece. And you should grab your pins and needles at this point as well. The first thing we're going to do is just mark a couple of rows on the front and back of your owlbear just to help us position some things later. So first off on the front, so with those ears centered, keeping in mind that, yeah, depending on how you've stuffed, your tail is going to drift to one side or the other side. It may not appear exactly centered. I just want to be upfront about that. My tail has been like drifting slowly to the left and then I squidge it back to the right and it stays there. And then I pick it up again and it's drifted back to the left. I think it's going to be one of those things that goes down that I'm going to put down to being a quirk of this particular pattern. So don't let it bother you too much if yours is also slightly to one side. But anyhow, uh, looking at the front of your owlbear, we want to grab a couple of pins and we want to mark row 36. So counting up from the starting magic ring here. 3, 34, 35, 36. So I'm going to mark row 36 and then row 40. So 37, 38, 39, 40. And then row 51. 51, 53. So those are the three important points for us to know on the front. On each of the sides, we want to know where row 35 is. So we've marked row 36 here, so we can just go down one row and follow it across to the side. I'm gonna mark that there. Follow it all the way across to the other side. Mark it there. Then we wanna roll over to the back and we want to mark row 49. So 
49. So that's this one here, and we want to follow it all the way around back of the head here. And mark that too. So now we have a couple of pin markings in place. We are going to stitch on some details. Now I'm going to be using a big plastic darning needle for this. And the first detail we're going to add is a seam around the base of our owlbear where we left those front loops free before. If you can see those on camera there, those front loops free before, we're going to add a seaming detail that's going to use those. Okay, hopefully that is a better angle for you. So in order to do this, I'm going to use exclusively a blue plastic darning needle, as you can see here, and some contrast colored yarn. And I've gone back and forth on this a little bit as to which color I want to use, but I think I'm gonna go with the darker color. So there we are. Sorry if this is really close. I just wanted to make sure that you guys could really, really see what it was we were gonna do. All right, I want you to find the starting point of your front loop rows. So I can see that this here, this here is the first available front loop, right? I'm just, I'm just sticking my needle under it so you can see it. So that makes this the first pair of front loops we're going to work into. And likewise, if I go one to the right, I can see that this is the last pair we're going to work into. So it's just like a full row that goes the whole way around. And to get started, I want you to insert your needle from just slightly further up in your owlbear so that it emerges just under where that first bottom front loop is. Like so. I'm then going to insert my needle over the front loop directly above our starting point and then diagonally across into the front loop next to it. This is one of those like visual things. I don't know if I'm <laughs> explaining it very clearly. Then we're just going to pull that all the way through like so. And then we can just repeat that across. So up and over the one above and then diagonally under the next one. And what you'll see is that it's forming this series of very even little stitches that look like it's holding the two pieces together. So we left those front loops basically to give you a stitch guide when adding this detail. I just thought that was a fun little way to kind of cheat not making this out of actually flat pieces. We're going to repeat that the whole way around. So you might be wondering who we have to thank for this particular idea. And you can thank the Frog Army over on Discord. I re pretty regularly check through, there's a couple of channels there where you guys can just make requests or present ideas. And I saw this guy from Baldur's Gate and I just instantly fell in love. I loved him, I wanted him, and I rearranged my entire schedule to have him. So now you guys get to have him too. Uh, so yeah, that's, that is the power of being part of the community over on Discord.
and then when we reach the end we have one more stitch like so then I'm just going to go down back inside the body and out over there and trim off your ends so there is our first little seam detail Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is add a seam all the way down the middle. Oh, yeah, you get your camera. The next thing we want to do is add a seam all the way down the middle of the back. So we have done that on our boy here. You can kind of probably very faintly see it because I've done it in a not very contrasty yarn. A bunch of tiny little horizontal stitches all the way up the back. So the first thing we need to do for that is to just add a piece of yarn to act as a guide so that we don't end off end up wandering one way or the other. I'm not even going to trim this off the ball. I've just grabbed the, the working strand and I'm going to just pin it in the middle at the bottom. And then up the top between the middle, sort of between the ears. Loosely is fine. You only need this like roughly centered. So all that's going to do is help us stay on track as we add these little horizontal stitches. So I'm going to do them again in my dark brown. I'm going to need a longer strand than this, but I'm going to start with this strand here. All we're going to do is inserting our yarn off to one side again, and poke it out in a gap, sort of one stitch up from where we just done the base seam there. And you're going to use your stitches, as in your crochet stitches, to help guide you with what stitch to work into. So we, got, we want to go in one stitch across on top of the yarn and then up one stitch staying on the same side. Like so all you have to do is be careful not to insert your needle through this piece of yarn and we'll just be able to pull it out at the end. So then we want to go back the other way. So one stitch over working on top of the yarn and one stitch up. So there's our second little stitch and I'm going to do that the whole way up the back until we reach our guide pin that I think was sitting at row 40, 41, 49, something like that. But we put a guide pin in and once we reach that, we can stop. Now these stitches will wander a little bit backwards and forwards because our crochet itself is worked on a spiral, not a straight grid, but that will just add a little bit of character and your main center line here will make sure that we don't stray too far off course. Okay, so I've worked just past where our marker pin is, just so that I know that the hood will definitely cover the end of it. And threading out. And the finishing off point could afford to be a little bit messy as well, just because it's going to be covered. This is all going to be sitting underneath the, the hood we made for the top of his head. There we go. So I feel like this bit's going to be really satisfying. <laughs> you ready? Uh, I'm going to take the pins out that were holding my guide yarn in. Zoom you in as close as we can. Alrighty, and ta-da! We have a back seam! Yeah, and it's a relatively straight back seam that I'm pretty pleased with. Okay, so with those first details added, next up we are going to be adding his face. So I've grabbed my little face disc here. You see here we have our stitch marker for row 40 and our stitch marker for row 51. And this face piece is going to be centered so that the bottom edge of it lines up over the top of row 40 and the top edge of it lines up over the top of row 51. And you want to center it in between those ears. So that is the correct placing for the face. Now, if you like, you can watch the next section all the way through to see us position the hood to make sure that your face is in the right spot. But I'm relatively confident with mine, so I'm just going to sew it on straight away. For this, I am going to be swapping to a sharp needle. And all I'm going to do is very carefully working through every single stitch around the outside of this face piece, sew it down to the head. The way to help your stitches look uniform as well is to always work your stitches in the same direction. And what I mean by that is you'll note that I've gone from underneath to on top through the face piece then over the top and into the body and so that means I want to work every single stitch working my needle from underneath to on top and then over into the body and all of my stitches will then look relatively uniform 
or at least we'll see. <laughs> What's funny about this is when I'm filming, I actually can't see how the stitches are turning out until I change the angle because otherwise the camera can't see what's going on. So you'll have to let me know if this is coming out okay. I don't want to check it till the end because I don't want to ruin the shot. So yeah, work as slowly and carefully as you need to. Honestly, this can be a very meditative type of process. Just make sure that you hit every single stitch around the outside of your face to properly secure it down. And the charm of this particular design is that even if your stitches get a little bit higgledy-piggledy, it, it actually kind of just adds to his charm. They're not imperfections, they're personality. So with that done, I'm just going to trim off my ends. You always thank yourself for working neatly. There we go. So our face piece is attached. So next up, we are attaching the hood. So our hood, if you remember, has this like cartoon diamond type of shape where we've got a flat edge on one side and a point on the other and then like a point at each of the widest sides as well. So hopefully that shape is making some visible sense to you. This edge here goes along the back of the head and this is the center of the forehead. So the easiest way to line this up, so we have this pin marking on the back here that was row 49. And all we're going to do is take the back edge of our hood and line it up roughly with row 49. So I'm going to pin it in place in a couple of spots. By the way, don't just shove your pins straight in, they'll pull straight back out. The trick to them is you put them in sort of slightly one way and then just like with a bobby pin, you push them around and in. And now that pin's not going anywhere. <laughs> so we've pinned that back edge down with Roughly row 49, it can be just on top of it, it can be just behind it, adjust it as needed. We are then going to wrap it forward and down in the middle of the face piece. Once again, I'm just going to pin that in place. And then we want each of those side corners to line up with the tops of one of our ears. Sorry, trying to, I'm trying to make it so you can see me do all of these things on camera. It's a little hard to get you close enough so that you can see, but not so close that it doesn't make any sense. So I'm just pinning that to the tips of both ears. And then anywhere it's sort of bubbling off the head, just add a couple of pins until it's sitting sitting down around its entire edge. Like so. So that's how we get that um, slightly bowed in shape to our face mask. So now once again in my dark brown, I'm going to work my way around the entire edge of this hood piece, sewing it down. And I'm gonna sew it on the exact same way as I did the face, working through every single stitch so that my needle comes from underneath the hood to on top of the hood and then around into the body. Ooh, thought I got all the pins, <laughs> there we go. So ooh, we're gonna hold him sideways so you can see. So we've done the stitching all the way around the top, which has given us a nice smooth hood that also builds the face. Okay, so with those two pieces attached, the next one we're going to attach is our back patch. Now that is the larger of the three squares that we've made. So we have two this size and we've got one this size and we are going to attach it basically centered along this seam that we made. Now. You could attach it sideways so that it's long, but I recommend that with these patches, rotate them so that your rows are running vertically against the horizontal rows of the body. And that will just sort of give them that mismatched fabric kind of appearance, which I think adds just like a, a level of niceness to it. So I'm just gonna pin this patch, as I said, just sort of centered along that main body seam. And we're just going to sew that along around the edge. Just like that, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit rough, you can see that you've got visible stitches around the sides there. Like, it's kind of, I kind of leaned into it. You kind of want this to be a little bit roughly sewn. So with that, we're actually gonna set this piece to one side for a moment. 
and we're going to grab our chest piece and one of our small patches. So decide which side of this you'd like to be your front. They should be pretty much exactly the same, but I don't know, sometimes stitches look a little bit better on one side than the other. So I'm going to say this is my front and I'm going to line my square up once again so that the rows are running vertically where they're running horizontally on the piece I'm attaching to. And I'm just going to line it up with the left hand point. So just there, off center against one edge, bring that in place. And then we're just going to sew around that as well. Just working through one layer of the chest. And whew, just like that. So still using my, my contrast thread. I potentially should have matched it to the stuff that I used around the edge, but I wasn't really thinking. And this is meant to be kind of a hodgepodge kind of creation. So I think it's fine. So we are now going to attach our chest piece to our body piece. So we have our pin marker here that is marking row 36. And we are just going to line our open side up with row 36. So basically there should be three rows visible of the body between the end of the face and the top of the chest. So I'm just going to pin that on, being careful that I'm pinning through both layers of the chest so that when I sew that on, I'm working through both layers of the chest. So there, there that is. And now we are going to sew all the way along this edge. And as mentioned, I'm just going to be very careful to make sure that my needle is going up through both layers of the chest. Close enough! Jesus, how long did I cut this piece of yarn? Alright, cut a shorter piece of yarn than I did. So with that sewn on, you can check that you've made it through both layers the whole way across by folding it up and you should be completely sealed underneath as well. And if you're not, just sew along there, there too. So that should sit flat against the body without having to sew on any more than that. We are once again going to pop this to one side. That was the sound of buttons going everywhere. Anyway, so we are going to be adding some details to our back paws. So you'll note that we have, oh, there we go. We have our front loop stitches around the opening of our paw. And just like we did at the base of the body, we are going to stitch through those to create the illusion of a seam. And I'm going to be using my contrast color like I have with everything else. So once again, identify where that first pair of loops is. It should be the start of your row. Just thread your needle out so it's just below that first front loop, like so. And then just in case you needed the reminder, we are going up and over the top, the front loop directly across from it, and then diagonally under the one next to it. And we are going to do that the whole way around both of these feet. like so. So now we have our stitch detailing on both feet. Now because I'm using beads for my claws I get to attach them now but I'm not good at this. So if you're also using beads for your claws I suggest you find someone else to show you how to do it because the claws on mine honestly keep falling off. But I'm, I'm gonna have a crack at it. You know, we, we, we are more than willing to try things we are bad at. We, that just doesn't mean we're not bad at them. So the way these claws work is you find the like top edge of your foot. It should be like the narrowest point at the top. And that is where your first little toenail goes. Then you want to count basically two visible stitches to one side. And that's where one goes. And then two to the other-ish. And that's where your final toe goes. So that's the, oh, there we go, I'll line that up so you can actually see. That's the vibe we're going for here. And now I'm just going to do my best to sew them on in a way that means that they don't fall off when tugged on. So bear with me. Well, I'll bear with me. <laughs> the yarn is stitched through, so it's very, very secure. I think that's the best attachment I've ever done. Okay, 
And one more. I am really pleased with how it's going this time. Never mind, I am good at this now. I wish I pulled that toenail tighter before I did that, but honestly they are pretty well attached. That's awesome. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other foot. So pop those to one side, they are now ready to attach. And we are now going to work on this again. Sorry for all the back and forth. You can obviously do this in whatever order you're comfortable with. This is just like the logical progression of techniques in my opinion. So the next thing we are going to attach to him is his front paws. And while you can attach, maybe here's somewhere, well you could attach the arm fluffs to the claws before, like we could do that now. I found that it's better to attach the arm first and then when you sew the fluff on, uh, you can sew it onto the body as well and it just anchors everything down a little bit better. We have a top point of our arm and we have a marked row 35. So we are just going to grab our arm and you want this corner to be equal with the row that we've marked, but you want it to be about three visible stitches between the point and the chest piece. And I'm just going to pin that top corner to the body. Looks like so it's swinging free. And then I'm just going to pull the, like position the arm down and around towards the front. And while I'm going to pin the paw in place against the body here, when we sew it on, we're actually only going to sew around this top corner bit, just down this straight edge to about there and down the front to about there. So this little triangle bit. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to find the point of our arm, line it up with that row with about three visible stitches after the chest. And while it's all swingity swingity, swing it towards the front and pin it in place against the body. And as mentioned, we are going to sew about halfway down this flat edge along the back, so to about here, and about the same distance towards the front. So we're really only sewing down this little triangle bit pretty firmly to the body. So we're just going to sew the tops of both of those arms on now. So with those anchored at the shoulders, I'm not going to unpin them from the body yet just because it's really helpful to have them held firmly in place. And we are going to sew on the rest of his claws. Again, if you're using beads, now is the time to do that. So you'll see at the base here of each paw, we can still see the starting magic rings. One bead is going to go over the top of the starting magic ring on each paw. And then you're going to count one stitch width away on each side. And that's where your, others, your other claws are going to go. So one stitch away, like so. And then I'm just going to sew those on really quick, like so. And uh, I'm pleased to report that I think every single toenail is passing the tug test at the moment, which Look, I'm not going to I'm not going to call myself out here, but I am not tugging on this guy's toes. They would fly everywhere. Okay. So, the next thing we need to do is attach his arm fluff. So, locate both of those pieces. And you'll note that each one has kind of two sort of circular bits and then like a long pointy bit. The long pointy bit faces down the arm and the two circular bits are the top of the shoulder. So, so we're going to line the open edge up with the flat part at the back of the arm. And the top of this is just going to kind of curve over the top of that point. Just a little bit. Line it up down the back of the arm. So you'll note that it's sticking out from the body. This is just the back view. It's pretty much on the arm except for at this top point here. That's what it looks like from the front. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. There we go. We have our arm fluffs pinned in place there. I didn't record that don't know why but basically all I did was I sewed up the back and then I sewed down the front on both of them to just firmly attach them there. Finally we are going to is it finally no we still have so we still have two back legs and a one remaining square and a missing face so we're gonna do the back legs next. So to attach these back legs all you do is kind of flatten the end that's going against the body as much as possible. We did stuff them and just kind of scooch them up under that arm. I mean, I'll just loosely pin this one in place to start with. And then we're going to check its rotation. So from the front, I can't fit him all in frame at the same time right now. So from the front, he's like that. 
and he will be sitting relatively flat. So that is good. So you'll note that that bottom seam is actually hitting him halfway through the leg on mine. Just you're going to need to play it by ear on yours and just make sure that your legs are not tilting him forwards or backwards and that he is going to be able to sit up nicely. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So just like loosely flatten the end going against the body and then just kind of tuck it up under that arm as best as we can. Check that he sits. And oh my, does he sit. He is such a, he is such a little gentleman. Oh my goodness. Let's try and zoom out a little bit there. There we go. Look at him. He's so cute. He's like a little Snorlax. Uh, then we are just going to sew on around the meaty part of his leg on both sides. Okay, I had to stop and charge my camera. But there are those legs attached. So we are obviously kind of right near the end of this piece now. I'm going to take out the pins that are holding the front paws down. I like that. And now all we have left to do is sew on a face and our final little patch. So our final patch here is our leg patch. It's the same size as the one we attached to the chest before. And we are going to put that on, it's his left leg, but if you're looking straight at him, it's his right. That makes sense. So it's the opposite leg to where we put the back patch. We are going to position that just somewhere on this leg that looks right to you. Now, what I will say is here, you'll notice that the, the rows of the leg are basically vertical. And so we want to rotate this so that it is running horizontal. Again, just the opposite direction of the rows to the leg to give us those different fabrication feelings. I'm going to pin mine right there. And I'm going to stop and sew that on in a minute. But before I do that, the other thing that we're really, really missing here is the face. So I'll sew this on at the same time. But all I'm going to do is position one of my buttons, my lovely sanded wooden buttons, on either side of our face panel here. And then I will make them so that they they line up. It's a bit hard to do that while they're on camera. Give me one second here. Better. And then I'm going to take my little beak bead and I'm going to sew it in the middle like that. So I'm just going to finish sewing on the last of these pieces now. And there is our finished Albert. Now I hope you had fun making him with me today. I now have two of them and they are, they are my boys. Yeah, that's it for this week. Okay, bye.